Hello, hello. My name is Ringo, and I love robots, as you can probably guess, based on the awesome device that I'm wearing. And this is my robot helmet, or as my wife likes to call it, my lady repellent. <laughs> which, I don't know why she calls it that, because look what it does when I bring my hand near. The sonar senses my hand and makes the little motors move. I also just recently decided to install a GoPro camera, which in a conversation I had with some friends last night, we were talking with a Learning 2 consultant by the name of San Miguel, and he recommended <laughs> that we put this on here. So I'm filming this all, and there's no need for the, the guys at the back. But uh, I, uh, I am using this helmet as an example of how robots can be a magical tool for educating our students. Now, when I think back to when I made my first robot move, which wasn't too long ago. I built the robot, I made the code, I sent the code to the robot, and then my robot drove forward a half meter, and I was ecstatic. I was jumping up and down, I was fist pumping, I'm calling my wife in, I'm taking video, I'm posting it online, and I hope that doesn't just show my own abnormalities, because <laughs> I see that same type of reaction from my students in high school. Uh, class. That's the immediate gratification uh, that I see all the time. We're immediately gratifying ourselves all the time in my class. The middle school... <laughs> so, middle school students, maybe when they first make a robot, they have that same reaction. Elementary students, when they're first building a robot, I think they get that excitement as well. And the powerful thing about that is that those students have to learn how to code to make that happen. And this is an amazing language for future opportunities for the students. And don't think that coding is just for high school kids or for middle school kids. There's amazing programs for younger students like Scratch that's very visual and can also be sent to a real physical device to super motivate these young students. Now, with a little bit of coding, you can very quickly do some big things. And my students love robot competitions. And if you've never been to a robot competition, you have to go. It is a nerdtastic celebration of science and coding and building all rolled into one. And if you show up wearing a robot helmet like this, no one will even look twice at you. It would be <laughs> like camouflage for all the other people wearing ridiculous robot stuff there. Now, my students will go to these competitions with maybe only a small amount of coding skills, but they'll quickly teach themselves more coding skills or just enough, just in time, to compete in that competition. And then they're going to retain that coding skills because they want to go back next year and do even better. Now, a little bit about this helmet. On the back is the brain of the helmet, and this is my all-time favorite microcontroller called the Arduino. And this is the industry standard, generic, super affordable, available anywhere robot brain. When we were in Denver this summer, we could just walk around the corner from our place and I could find this shop that would sell me a six pack of craft beer and a six pack of Arduinos all at the same place. It was, I was there all the time. <laughs> now what I love about the Arduino is it's got all these wires that are sticking out everywhere. And not only does that make me look even more like a freak of nature, but you have to know where those wires go. And then suddenly you have to learn some circuitry. And then boom, you're bringing in all this stuff that you learned in physics class, but you're retaining it because you have to remember it in order to make better and better robots. Now, I also had to learn about sonar. And this little flashing guy, that's a sonar device. And I learned that it's beaming out ultra-high frequency sound waves to you all in the first row, bouncing off of you, coming back here, I'm catching it, and then processing that to know your proximity. That's how a bat catches its prey. I am robotic Batman up here. <laughs> I don't have a utility belt, but I'm nearly just as awesome. <laughs> now, to hold all the wiring together, I had to use a soldering iron. And my kids love to solder because it gets hot, it makes some smoke, and smoking's pretty cool when, when you're using a soldering iron because it's going <laughs> to take the soft metal and turn it into molten metal, melt it all over your wires, and then solidify them so you've got circuitry that will last, hopefully, 
for the end of time. So you've got a project now that involves coding, wiring and circuitry, molten hot metal. The only, it couldn't get any more awesome unless you involved lasers. Holy cow, it does involve lasers. Because <laughs> check it out, this is laser cut acrylic and this is laser cut cork, cut on, go figure, a laser cutter. And we're teaching our students to do some computer-aided computer -aided design and then they can print out, or sorry, laser cut out their own acrylic parts. And my robotic students are gonna use this to pimp out their robots so that when we go to our next robot competition, we're gonna have the sexiest robots there because of all the laser cut acrylic accoutrements that our robots <laughs> are wearing. Now it gets even better. Check out this bow tie. Uh, this is a 3D printed bow tie. And we're teaching our students to do some CAD work in three-dimensional software. And they're able to now print out their own robotic parts on our 3D printers, which happen to be right next door to the robotics lab. Now that's a lot of learning all rolled in to a robotic project. And in conclusion, my students are super motivated to build, design, and create an amazing project with lots of learning involved in it. And I hope that at your schools or within your classroom, you have a similar type of uh, you know, project that your students can do that motivates them to also design, build, and create in a similar type of motivational manner. Thank you.